Hi folks, Jason Webster here. Hey, we are in Pontiac, Illinois at the PTI farm and we are working on harvesting some corn. And this has been a uh, pretty interesting trial that we're working on here. Some of you folks have flag tested before where we're looking at the differences in emergence timing and what that means to yield losses. And a lot of folks do this flag testing in the spring but a lot of folks forget that they did some of that flag testing and they don't take it to yield in the fall to truly understand the difference in emergence timing and the differences in yield per acre that we can, we can have. So we did a bunch of flag testing this spring here at the farm. And this is our, our corn closing evaluation study where we're looking at the even emergence and with different closing systems on the planter and we flagged our, our, our emergence timings every 12 hours from the first moment in time that first corn plant came out of the ground. Our team's there and we're flagging it. Every 12 hours, we're going to monitor emergence. So we're there 12 hours, 24 hours, 36, 48, and 48 plus. We've collected some of the samples and this is what I hope a lot of you folks that are doing that did flag test because this tells the whole story of what's happening in the field. Now, the only way to truly figure out yield after flag testing is to take each ear to harvest. You're going to have to weigh these ears and understand the difference in weight, difference in yield. So briefly, here are my 12-hour sample sets that we, we've gone through here today. We've separated these 12 hours, and in my opinion, this is the best that we can do, getting all those plants up within the, uh, 12 hours. But what happens if we get a delay of 12 hours? Now we're at 24 hours. We see the ear, ear size reduce a bit. We go to 36 hours. We reduce quite a bit. And then it starts to be a train wreck as we get to 48 hours in 48 plus. What does this really mean? Well, if 12 hour emergence is what we're shooting for, I'd kind of like to know if I have a delay of just 12 hours to get me to the 24 hour emergence time frame, what is that costing me? But the samples we've collected today, a 12-hour reduction in time is about an 18% reduction in yield. 18% reduction is what we're looking at. These ears are weighing just under half a pound, 0.475 pounds uh, per ear. That's about 16% corn, so the corn has dried down really fast this fall. But we've, we always say that we're looking for ears that are close to a half pound. Our 12 hours are 0.578, okay? But as we go down 12 hours to the 24 hour time frame, we're losing 18% yield potential. We go to 36 hours. Now we're losing 30% of yield potential. This is average year weight of 0.407. We go to 48 hours, 52% ear weight loss. We're giving up half of our corn crop with this 48 hour late merger. Then the worst one we've got is our 48 hour plus category, anything that came up after 48 hours. And some of these ears aren't actually an ear. There's nothing really on them. Um, but this is a 91% yield reduction at the 48 hour plus category. Now, we see the differences in, in, in emergence timing. We see the losses that can happen. Now, the proposition I'm asking you folks is, how do we get better? How do we be better? with getting faster emergence, uniform emergence. And we've tried a lot of things at the PTI farm, whether it's starter fertilizers, biological products, things like that. And really the best thing that we can do to get us faster, more uniform emergence is do the best job possible when it comes to closing systems. So here's what I'm talking about with closing systems. <laughs> I asked the closing system of our planter to do two jobs for me, just two jobs. One is, is those openers, disc openers I have of the planter. It's going to create sidewalls, sidewall smear. And, and my first job of a closing system is to blow those sidewalls out and make it look like we were never, ever there. That's soil density, and I want to remove that. The other thing I want a closing system to do is remove an air pocket. You see this seed on this particular poster, this, this picture. This green seed is tucked down into the bottom of the trench, but it's surrounded by air. This seed is going to germinate late because it can't imbibe moisture from the soil because it doesn't have good seed to soil contact. The closing system left an air pocket and we're going to have a late emerger. So again, those are the two things I'm asking a closing system on my planter to do for me. 
Look at that trench. Think about what I mentioned before. If we tuck every seed into the trench the same way, get that good seed to soil contact, it's going to be able to imbibe water at the same rate, start to germinate, and it stands the reason that a lot of those plants could come up at the same time. And that's exactly what we're shooting for. But we've got to do a good job of tucking these seeds in the trench, getting good seed to soil contact, eliminating these side walls, and eliminating the air pockets. So how are we going to do a better job of closing? Here at PTI Farm, we've been using Furrow Force. This is a two-stage automatic closing system. It's done a really nice job of attacking the two things we want a closing system to do and blowing those side walls out and, and getting rid of the air pockets. It's been very versatile in different tillage uh, systems. We're testing conventional tillage, vertical tillage, strip till, no till, and it does a really nice job in all of those conditions. And I know a lot, of, a lot of you folks won't have all of those different tillage components on your farm, but the versatility of this system goes to show me that if you have soil type changes or soil variability through your individual fields, this type of closing system can react, adjust, and do a better job of closing as a result of it. So we're going to put all this data together. We'll be able to release it uh, this winter at some of our um, uh, agronomy meetings. We're going to crunch some numbers, but for right now, we're seeing some big differences in having some of these late emergers in the field, and it's going to add up to significant yield loss. So be thinking about next spring, about how you're going to set your planter up and how you're going to do a better job of closing on your planter.